Electronic circuits are one of technology's greatest triumphs. They are ubiquitous and an indispensable component of modern life. They exist from the cell phone in your pocket to the satellites in space, to the autonomous robotic vehicles that scour the ocean floor. They are the catalyst upon which the third industrial revolution was built upon and the foundation that led to the information age that we see ourselves in now. As transformative and complex as they are, the basic foundation for circuits is actually quite straightforward and grounded in a little bit of math. The simple approach to thinking about circuits is to understand a few basic principles about the way that circuits might behave. It's all about the flow of electricity and a few key ideas like voltage and current. So in a device like this, this we would call a voltage source. It might have a voltage V. We can think about a voltage source such as a battery. The most common is your lithium ion batteries that power your cell phone or your AA batteries that power, that power various components in your home. And these are connected to other components via wires, just passive pieces of copper or other types of conducting material to other components, components like a resistor or components like, let's draw that again, like a capacitor. And resistors are things that resist flow, capacitors are other objects that can store charge. And this circuit has to be closed. So it has to come back and touch the negative terminal of, of the battery. We might sometimes consider this tied off into ground, which is a reference voltage potential that everything is tied into. That's the symbol for ground, G N D. And there's a set of mathematics that govern the properties and the behavior of this circuit. Now, what's really nice about circuits is that there is a intuitive analog to understanding the behavior of circuits, the flow of things like current, which we often denote as I, through the circuit and the changes in voltage that we see across these various components. And the analogy that's extremely useful is the water analogy. And there is indeed a one-to-one -one mapping of ideas of what a voltage source is or what a resistor is or what a capacitor is and how these components behave to the way water flows through a pipe, where the pipe is the wires and the various things that we're gonna put in the pipe are the various components here. So the first and key elements to introduce are the two analogies of voltage and current because everything is built off of those. So we have the circuit version, so the electronic version we'll put over here. And then we'll put the water analogy in over here. And now we will think about what these terms are and how they relate. So the, one of the fundamental properties of a circuit is, the pro, is how voltage behaves across the components. So we have the idea of voltage, which is measured in volts, these are the units, and it's described usually by the symbol V. And the water equivalent to this is pressure. The pressure in the pipe. And so if we have a pipe, let's draw a pipe over here, water pipe, where water is flowing this way, the pressure coming into the pipe, how hard the pressure is being pushed down the pipe, that pressure is the equivalent of voltage. 
Voltage is just how charged, how powerful, how energized the electrons that are flowing through the circuit are. And that's a direct analog mathematically to the pressure that is behind a pipe that's causing water to flow. So you can imagine thinking about this higher pressure and lower pressure as what happens when you turn your faucet a little bit on versus a lot on. The more you turn your faucet on, the more, the, 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 the more pressure you are allowing to flow, right? The faster that water is going to flow because why? There's more pressure being released into, into um, out of the faucet. That's a direct understanding of, of, of pressure. It's how hard the water is being pushed through the pipe. Now, there's a similar analogy to the idea of current. Current is measured in units of amps or amperes. Uh, we'll just shorten that to amps, it's easier. In amps. And its symbol is I. And the shorthand symbol for amps is A. Um, whereas in volts, the symbol for volts is shortened to V. And the actual the symbol we use, the letter we use to describe voltage is V. So these are different, right? It's I and A versus V and V. And the equivalent water analogy for current is flow. More specifically, it's rate of flow or flow rate. This represents how quickly the water is flowing through the pipe. Not just how quickly, but it literally is the account for how many water molecules per given time are flowing through a cross section of the pipe. If you take a look at a cross section and you had some magical way to count the, the number of water molecules passing through a cross section of the pipe, that would be the flow rate. Current is exactly the same thing for, for electronic circuits. It's the rate at which electrons which carry charge, the charge is flowing through a, any particular segment of, of the circuit. That's what current means. How many electrons or what charge is the rate of change of charge. Charge is often described in, uh, in the circuits with the letter Q, which will denote as charge. And so you can see, for example, that when, that you can have a high voltage being applied, lots of pressure being applied, but if there's a wall here, right, this isn't just a, uh, if we actually put up a wall, right, a solid wall going through this, you can push the pressure as much as you want. This voltage can be extremely high, but the current will be zero because no water is flowing through the wall. So current and voltage are two separate concepts. You can have a very high pressure and basically no flow. On the other hand, you could imagine a situation where there's very, very little blocking of flow here. And so this is, the water is gonna flow extremely quickly for even tiny, tiny bits of pressure being applied into the pipe. It's still gonna flow very rapidly. So high current can happen with low voltage as well. The two ideas are totally separate. And these two concepts have, uh, are the basis for understanding electronic circuits. Once you understand the water analogy on how current is equal to flow rate, flow rate and voltage is equal to pressure, water pressure, then it will make a lot more sense how different components of electronic circuits interact with these, and with these properties, because we'll look at them all through the eyes of what it means uh, in the water analogy.